Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So we are in the fifth week of our sermon series called God is Holding Your Life. And we've been reminded of some very important things as we've gone through these psalms. You see, I don't know about you, but I find that most people, myself included, have very short attention spans. Just so. <laughs> and our minds are going in so many directions that we're distracted and we forget. And we need to be reminded. So far we've been reminded that our lives are precious to God. That our God is a God of awe and wonder. That there is no place that we can go to escape God. And in God alone we can place our trust because you see God is our refuge. And today, we're going to talk about offering God all that we are, a wholehearted love, a wholehearted giving of ourselves. Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of that's pretty scary. Seriously, it's scary, isn't it? To give yourself away completely and entirely. Some of us were married, and we took those vows and we might have been a little nervous, but after the honeymoon, we were like, what have we done? <coughs> just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, I'm just kidding. For those of you, I mean, that have, have been married and you're in a great relationship, it's, it's wonderful. And then for some of us, it didn't work out, but that's okay. Because you see, I know God's got me just like he's got everybody, regardless. I don't even know why that came out, but it's a part of my sermon notes. <laughs> but, you know, if you heard Missy read this song, it's just like, praise God, praise the Lord, over and over and over again. So you can imagine that I did pull out the commentaries to read and see what they said. And they said, praise God. Over and over and over again. <laughs> but I did learn a few things. The very first letter in each one of the lines of this psalm forms an acrostic. However, that acrostic is in Hebrew. So for most of us sitting in here in this congregation, we wouldn't get it. I think I know one person that might get it in this congregation, who was a Hebrew scholar. The rest of us were like, sounds good to me. But second, the one thing about this psalm that I do love is it's a communal psalm. You know, the song that the choir just did, and I have no idea other than I know it's an African song, was this like a Stephen, was this a communal song or something that was sang in worship or praise? Probably. Probably. Most, most of the songs were. Because it sounds like that. I mean, in the song, you know, and, and I love that we took this, this African praise the Lord song and we combined it, or I use the term we loosely, combined it though with God the Almighty, the one that we all just sang, and the choir sang it from the, when the African style and integrated the words from the hymn that was so familiar to many of us. You see, because that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be praising God. We're supposed to be testifying of who God is as a church in a community and as individuals as we live our lives. We're supposed to be speaking out and speaking stronger and speaking more. The, this psalm challenges us to, de, to declare who God is in our lives very publicly. But it's also a psalm of accountability. 
You see, God's people are established based on their willingness to acknowledge God's goodness among one another and the world beyond. This psalm is saying, don't hide your light under a bushel. Y'all remember that little parable from Jesus? A city on a hill can't be dimmed. I love Missy's version of it. I want you to hear the words again through the New Living Translation. And ask yourself as you hear each of these verses, is this where I am today? Because today it may not be. We all know that we have lives that, that, that are great and that we have those great days and then we have some tough days, don't we? But overall, this hymn challenges us. Praise the Lord. It starts with those three words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you say the word, I want you to say hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah. So how do you feel? You just get a little, get a little lift in your life? See, that's what this psalm is saying. When we live our lives in a place of hallelujah, we aren't down here. We're remembering that we are part of of the God above who created all this. It says, I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. Well, look left and right. Y'all supposed to be the godly people. <laughs> Give it your best shot. And then, he, then the psalmist goes on to say, how amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. When's the last time you pondered, other than just kind of going brain dead or scrolling through Facebook or Instagram? And you know what? I don't care what your age, lots of folks do Facebook and Instagram. It's not just people in their 20s and 30s. Everything God does reveals his glory and majesty his righteousness never fails. This is one of those times, that's one of those church words, righteousness. What does it mean? It means the very entity, the very personhood of God is about justice and about love and about wanting what is best for God's children. And that is what we should be wanting, too, in every single way. God causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. When's the last time you received some mercy from the world around you? Not often. I recently, where was I? I was, I was checking out somewhere recently, and I, I just kept, I kept trying to be Chick-fil-A to the person who was supposed to be assisting me. I kept saying, have a pleasant day. <laughs> you know, here's my stuff. Is, and, and I know every day is not sunshine and roses. I know every day, some days are more difficult than others. I know anniversaries of certain dates are hard for us. But as children of God, we know that we have a God that underpins us and holds us when we cannot hold ourselves. And we are called in all situations and places to lean into that and to remind one another when we see each other struggling that they need to know and they need to feel God's love. Need to be reminded God gives food to those who fear him. He remembers his covenant. I remember a story in the Bible where people were provided for. Do you? Maybe some people who were wandering around in the desert and didn't have anything to eat. 
people that God made a covenant with. See, God's made a covenant with all of us. God will provide. God has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. I'm going to pass that one by because we're in the midst of some terrible things that are happening now, aren't we? Yes. <clears throat> and I don't have an answer. I'm just going to own that. I don't have an answer for what's going on in Israel and Palestine and the entire Middle East right now. I know that it's complicated. And I know both sides are angry, and both sides have right to be angry. So it is not our job to judge and to choose sides. It's our job to pray for God's peace on behalf of the Middle East. It's our job to pray for the people who have lost loved ones. It's our job to pray for the protection of everyone who is involved in those conflicts. All God does is just and good, and all his commandments are trustworthy. Have you ever thought about the fact that when you're in the midst of something that it, it doesn't feel so good, and you're struggling, have you ever said, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> have you ever had those moments like, why am I here, and why am I dealing with this? And Lord, what's going to come of this? Because right now, this is an awful space and place for me. And this is where God says, trust me. Trust me. All will be okay in the end. God's commandments are forever true and to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. Boy, that's a new word, isn't it? Integrity. What would it mean if we lived our lives with integrity? Well, I try to do that, and I'm sure almost everybody here, no, I'm sure all of y'all try to live lives of integrity. I wish we could kind of send that up to a little place called Washington, D.C. <laughs> Lives of in integrity I mean lives that are lived wholeheartedly and fully and without deceit. Where my word is my bond. And I strive to be God's representative in this world. And folks, so many people are being lied to. If we can be a light of integrity in the world around us, we need to do it at every opportunity because people are so disillusioned and so discouraged. They need to know that there is honesty out there, that there are people who want justice, that there are people who need to know that someone cares for them. God has paid a full ransom for his people. He guaranteed them with his covenant and is with them forever. You know, God's covenant is different than everybody else's because God made that covenant directly with humanity, saying that you are mine and I am yours. So no matter what anyone tells you, you have worth, you have value, you are precious in my eyes. What a holy, awe-inspiring name God has. Now here's one that I have heard quoted so often. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You ever remember hearing that? Yes. No. Uh oh. <laughs> I heard a yes somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mine says it's the foundation of true wisdom. Fear of the Lord. Does that mean I'm supposed to be scared all the time? 
Yeah. God's going to be thump, ready to thump me every time I look left or right. That's well, Fear is one of those words that we really don't understand in Scripture. Because growing up, when we think of fear, we think of being afraid, right? Something is out to get us. Well, I just want to let you know, in case somebody has ever told you that God is out to get you, that they're lying. Fear of the Lord is like reverence and understanding that God is God and I am not. And I will never have complete understanding while I walk on this earth. Fear of the Lord is, is seeing God and knowing that God loves me no matter what. No matter how broken, no matter how what I think is awful, no matter how judgmental I become, God loves me anyway. And God only wants what's best for me and is challenging me to live into my best self. Fear of God is saying, okay, God, I'm going to turn this over to you and I am going to step out in faith. I'm going to live in a way that makes a difference. I'm going to be part of your creation. You know, that's one of the things we forget. We say God created the heavens and the earth, right? God did it. When the truth is, we are part of God's creation. We are part. We have been invited by God to make a difference and to continue creating. And part of that is how do we live? And how do we make a difference? So often we live our lives as if all we have to deal with is whatever's in our own little bubble and whatever we do doesn't make any difference at all. And if that's how you're living your life, I just want to tell you it's a bald-faced lie. Flat out, unadulterated, bald-faced lie. Everything we do. Everything we do, what we say, how we live makes a difference. Some people may think it's silly that the Girl Scouts are collecting those saran film wrap things that are, uh, they're collecting those and recycling those. You know that small act of me not throwing something away but setting it aside so that it can go into this recycle bin makes a difference. Will that one act save the world? No. But one act upon one act upon one act upon one act upon another upon another, what we do matters. What you do matters. <clears throat> what I do matters. All who obey God's commandments will grow in wisdom. When we understand that we are part of something larger, when we are part of the world around us to make a difference in the lives of others, when we get that, we begin to move into a space of wisdom. And then the final verse is, praise him forever. Hallelujah. Now, when I read this, okay, here I go off on another tangent, so just run with me. It reminded me of something that um, I learned in the business world. Anybody in the business world know how to declare bad news to somebody? You make a sandwich. You say something good. Give them all the information here, which might not be what they want to hear, and then you say something good. You make a sandwich. Now, when I read this, I said, this psalm is a sandwich. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and all the stuff in between. <laughs> but the good news is all the stuff in between is stuff that is nourishing and healthy and glorious for our souls. Things that transform us. And I think the one thing that I caught in this that I was not expecting when I read it was that God has an expectation for me to participate in God's creation. Whatever that looks like. There's a story that Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci when he would begin a work on canvas, he would set it up and he would work on it. So he would choose the subject, He'd plan the perspective. He'd sketch the outline. He began applying the colors with his own genius. And then suddenly he would cease. And the painting was still unfinished and it still needed so much to be done. And he would summon his students and he would say, you need to finish this work. You need to complete this piece. The student protested and said that he was both unworthy and unable to complete this great painting that the master had begun. So, but Da Vinci silenced him and said, will not what I have done inspire you to do your best? Our master began at the beginning of time through creation and entrusted us with continuing the masterpiece that was begun at the beginning of this world. And through Jesus Christ, he has equipped us to do everything that we need to do as believers to transform the world. And so the question is, are you with us? Are you ready? It's time that we put ourselves to work. Amen and amen.